release of Loki Season 2's finale finally out. We have 13 seasons of MCU Disney Plus shows to talk about. This isn't going to include the Netflix shows. This isn't going to include your ABC Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is just strictly what has premiered on Disney Plus. And like last time when I did the Star Wars ranking for this of the shows, a lot of you guys asked me to actually break it up into seasons. So that's what I'm going to be doing. Loki season one and two will be completely separate on here. And going forward, that's how this list will be. At the end of this year, I will be doing an MCU movie and TV show ranking all together once What If season two comes out. And the movie ranking for the Marvels, the updated version of that at least, is already out now as you are watching this. So make sure to go check that out afterwards. But I had to do this after seeing the finale of Loki season two i wasn't planning on doing this i was gonna wait but i gotta talk about it a little bit more so with that said guys let's dive into this ranking right now coming down to my number 13 is i am groot these little shorts are absolutely adorable and cute but pertain to no context whatsoever to anything else in the mcu this is my not my least favorite thing but it's just like the least significant thing that i could give one shit about uh i love groot i think groot's cute but that's the reason that's at the bottom. I wasn't even going to include this, but the last time I did this ranking, you guys all freaking attacked me for not including I Am Groot, so I'm doing it now. I'm also not splitting up the different seasons and parts, because I'm that, that's just a waste for this one. And at my number 12, it is Secret Invasion, a series that I thought was absolutely excellent on the first two episodes. I was completely locked in. This was, again, a show that I was not excited for going in. I uh, kind of like how Loki was originally, and I say that because I wanted this to be an Avengers-level threat, but then they I saw the first trailer, and I'm like, like, spy espionage, this looks awesome. And the first two episodes delivered that. And then it went to shit. Whether it's execution of absolutely rushing choices, rushing certain elements, killing off Talos for no damn reason, a rhyme, and that didn't really add anything. And then, the, I don't even know if I want to talk about the ending. This, this is like one of the most messy series and truly was the thing that just made me go, why did they even put this out? The choice of making Rhodey a scroll since Civil War backfires on certain things with an endgame, in my opinion. I just, I don't know. Uh, th this series, uh, the first two were great, but everything after that was absolutely horrendous. Uh, and the more and more I think about it, the more and more disappointed I am by this series. Uh, this is the bottom of like almost anything in the MCU. And that's saying a lot coming from someone who loved the first two episodes. How did they stray so damn far? What I will give credit though is the performances are great. I did like seeing Amelia Clark in here. I hope they find some avenue for her in the future, but Samuel Jackson's performance was hands down the best part about the entire show. That, that's all I have to really say. You get into my number 11, which is Falcon and the Winter Soldier, a series that I think is pretty good, but overall pretty forgettable. It's one that I wish I could love more because I love so many elements of it. I love the US agent aspect. I love really much Anthony Mackie coming into his own as Captain America specifically by that last episode. But the villain, Bucky's storyline just didn't seem as fleshed out as it should have been. All these misjam things just don't really come together and i really wanted them to come together a little bit stronger so i don't hate the series it's just one that i don't really care to go back and rewatch ever now at my number 10 we have she hulk and i think a lot of people are probably gonna have this a lot lower on their list i do not disagree with you i understand the show is a mess but for some reason, this is the show that I actually don't mind rewatching. Um, there's some elements in some episodes that are awful and some episodes that are great, like the Daredevil. And I thought even the finale I thought was great with the breaking of the fourth wall. Tatiana Maslany is excellent in this role. I thought she was great as Jennifer Walters. And I think overall, the tone that they were going for worked. But when watching it week to week, it did not like satisfied all this is actually a show i think that should have been released from the start one go around and that's it not waiting week to week for something to happen it it was a, a legal procedural show that really ended in the end of the day just ended up being a comedy half an hour sitcom and, that, and that's all it ended up being and i think she hulk had the potential to be more and it was never more 
but the fun elements of the show are the reasons that it is higher than anything else on this list. It's so insignificant to anything else in the MCU. It doesn't really affect or hurt any of the other bigger, wider elements in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like Secret Invasion does. And it has a lot of fun moments, and the Daredevil episode alone is better than any of the other episodes within this show. In the shows that I've already talked about. So, She-Hulk's not great. It's pretty messy, but it's a show that I can appreciate the mess and have fun with it, even if it is really stupid at times. But I think a lot of the reason I'm having this up higher is because of Tatiana Maslany. I, I think she is so good in the role. Brings me up to my number nine, which is What If Season 1, which I think was a really intriguing idea, but sadly most of the what ifs that they did were just very generic what if ideas and I feel like they could have gone a little bit further and I'm hoping season two does that I know the list is actually like leaked out of what it is I won't mention it here because I if you want to be surprised on what the what ifs are you'll be surprised but for me there's about four or five episodes in here that were good to great and then the rest were pretty forgettable in that instance and you know I'm really happy that we get the Marvel Zombies one the Doctor Strange one is still the best one I think everyone happens to talk about and I like how it ends up connecting into this overall multiverse Avengers team even if the last episode is just wild in its own right thing about what if is for me is you're supposed to do these wild and crazy ideas in the mcu and they do most of them i just wanted more from the series and i think you have cool animation but then like if you look at the first episode of peggy carter there's not like much more to that episode and there's a couple more like that in in the matter that i just like watched and i was like that was cool that's about it and and that's kind of how i walked away with the series is it's awesome, it's fun, but I've never rewatched it since. We get into my number eight, which is Hawkeye. And I would say Hawkeye and On Up, I very much overall enjoy these shows, even if I do have frustrations with them. Hawkeye, for instance, I think could have been even a longer series, or honestly could have been an argument to have been a movie. Because you are adapting the Matt Fraction run of Hawkeye, the best comic book ever made for this character, and you really don't land or nail any of the bigger aspects of it. And then you're trying to tie in Kingpin, which was a big surprise. Love seeing Vincent D'Onofrio come back. But you keep him this mystery for six episodes where he should have probably been from the start. And that's a big issue with a lot of these MCU series overall. But for me, watching Hawkeye, it was one of the biggest things. But I also can't deny, Hawkeye is a blast. I love that we got more time with Jeremy Renner as this character. I like that now, even though he is in a completely different, utter space than any of his other characters and in general how he's been, he's the one dealing with a lot of the ramifications of Endgame, of Infinity War, of being a part of the Avengers. And we get that street level version and street level view of it. And also what happens after what he did as the Ronin. There's a lot of choices and a lot of dis disagreements that have to come about that. But then you also bring in Kate Bishop, which I think is a great introduction to this character. And I think Haley Steinfeld's excellent. I love how they were able to mix them together. I think their chemistry was wonderful. This is overall just a really fun series that lacks that umph that I think it was needed in the finale. And a lot of that, again, just goes down to poor mismanagement of what they were trying to do with the villain itself, trying to keep it a secret, when in reality it should have just been established from the start. And I think Kingpin should have been a major forefront of the entire show. Now, my number seven, though, is Miss Marvel. Now, this show, I think has kind of gotten flack for being a little bit too kiddie and there's nothing wrong with being too much for kids but I think Kamala Khan is an excellent introduction and probably one of the best introductions to a character in the MCU thus far and the reason that I'm saying that is because Iman is so damn likable she's excited to be in this world and you can tell that on a performance level and just on a personable level she's so damn great and while I still don't love the changes that they had made with Kamala Khan's powers, I still wish they would have gone with the stretchiness. I think it works for the context of this show. I think it works for the overall context of the MCU and what they've established. And I overall kind of like the context that she is a mutant. Now, I know not everyone loves that. I know some people were like, she should still be an inhuman. Maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't. But the reveal of that at the very end was great. Reason this isn't higher. Same thing with a lot of the Disney Plus stuff. Six episodes doesn't work. You spend this whole flashback episode, which was great in context, but not within the show. In that case, when you get into Miss Marvel, six episodes just again felt rushed. The first three, great. And then you just get into rush, 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 rush. Villain is completely lackluster. Everything in the back half is lackluster. 
But what continued to not be lackluster was Miss Marvel, her family, and her friends, and their all dynamics. I really liked seeing this level of the MCU and how like so many people praise superheroes. I just wish they didn't rush this damn show. I think this show should have been like eight episodes, and I think it would have been the perfect amount. Now we're at my number six, and like I mentioned, we're including the specials as well. So Guardians of the Galaxy, the holiday special, did some great stuff with developing Drax and Mantis together, but specifically Mantis, who I think is a character that I liked in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, but didn't really get much to do. Infinity War, I liked them. Endgame, I liked them for the small little bit they had. This finally gave added development which I think then going into volume three, while yes, I think it was pretty obvious that they were siblings. Volume three, you didn't have to know that going in, but now knowing that added context for Mantis, I think where she makes and starts to make her choices by the end of that film, just gives a little bit more of that added emotional umph. And giving a Guardians of the Galaxy holiday special, this is just such a rewatchable one. I know for this holiday season, I'm definitely going to rewatch it a couple times. And I know last holiday season, I definitely watched it a couple times. I think this is just such a joyous event. And I think they did a great job with this. And including Kevin Bacon in here, it's fun. That brings me into my number five, which is WandaVision. I'm not going to lie. WandaVision would actually be my number one on here if it wasn't for the finale. I thought the finale was kind of lackluster and overall just something that I've seen before from the MCU. It's something that I just kind of watched and I was like, oh, okay, that's how it's going to end. Where like the rest of the series was always so intriguing, so unique, and so different to itself. I really needed that little bit of difference in the finale. And that's something that I very much appreciated in such things as Loki itself. Now, WandaVision, though, is still as a whole one of the coolest things the MCU has done. And the added development of Vision and specifically Wanda herself has just been top tier, making Elizabeth Olsen and really much giving her a character to grind on and develop in such a fascinating way. I have overall loved what they have done with Elizabeth Olsen's character in WandaVision, and I love the tale of grief and how that feels. If you've ever lost someone, this show can devastate you. Specifically, I think it's either episode seven or eight, which just wants to rip your heart out. I said episode seven or eight. I meant episode six or seven. Uh, this is, again, a show that also feels a little bit rushed. Probably could have had one or two more episodes to develop it overall. But WandaVision was a joyous event. And it kind of seemed like that's where the MCU is just, like, held together. And everyone's like, yay, we agree. And I don't know what happened after that. It kind of got depressing to talk about the MCU. Number, number four is Werewolf by Night, though. Now, I haven't watched the color version. I'm assuming it's the same damn thing but just in color but the black and white version was awesome it brought me back to like the days that i'd watch like creature from black lagoon with my father and getting that werewolf nature then bringing in man thing and elsa bloodstone and all the horror aspects the horror element of the mcu is like one of my favorite things that they've only touched on so slightly in the films within like doctor strange but in so slightly now in werewolf by night but this was such a surprise i had not heard good things about this before it had come out the trailer was not my jam i like the vibe of what michael giacchino was going for but watching it i shit you not i was surprised and usually with disney plus screeners for press they allow us to watch like they give us like four or five watches on certain things i watched every single time i was so addicted to it then it came out and then i rewatched and told everyone to watch i love werewolf by night and specifically what it was able to do i thought the characters were fun and a blast and i'm still chomping at the bits waiting for the next time that we get to see them michael giacchino just did a great job directing this bringing that sense and style and those sensibilities to those older stuff but also giving me a lot of love within it as well so plus plus Love the gore, love the blood, love the action. Man thing, give me more him, please. Coming down to my number three is Moon Knight. Now, for me, I know a lot of people probably have this a lot lower on their list. Just on a personal bias, th this is why it's higher on my list. Moon Knight is one of my favorite comic book heroes of all time. I have like a, a comic book shelf right here with like thousands, not thousands, that's over explaining it, but I have like all the omnibus for Moon Knight. I just freaking love this guy and I love Mr. Knight and all that sorts of things. And I thought this was a different interpretation of him and I was all for it. It really gave me a great dynamic. And then having Oscar Isaac play this character, it just worked. It went weird and wild and wacky. And speaking of horror, they interjected some things in there as well. Now, a couple issues with Moon Knight. I'll, I'll completely be with you guys it should have been longer, more series. We should have had more to it. 
and it was a little bit rushed and some of the fight scenes like how they would just black out and not show it they should have absolutely shown it i, I think that was a little bit of a going back and rewatching it it was not the choice to make at the very end specifically towards the back half i think the finale they should have at least shown it and it would have added to that um but just hiding it and then just like at the very end showing who it actually was we all knew it like us comic book fans did so as of that Moon Knight, though, was badass to me. I loved Khonshu. I loved the development of the Egyptian gods. I loved uh, the Scarlet Sca Scarab or something like that. I thought she was fantastic. I liked how she got the power set at the end. I just want more of this. This is another series that I'm shocked that a season two has not been announced yet because this seems to be something that we should be getting a season two of. It was left open just enough to develop more to that. And I don't care if it connects to anything else much as I would love to see it connect. This is just something that I don't care if it stays in its own same roundhouse and you just focus in it on there because the thing that's so cool about Moon Knight is it doesn't connect to anything else in the MCU. Maybe small little references here and there, but overall it is so disconnected that it's okay that anyone can jump in and watch this show and appreciate Ethan Hawke's incredible villainous performance and also the weirdness and eccentricness of Mr. Knight and just in general Moon Knight himself. I loved seeing the split personality and all the psychological damage that you see Oscar Isaac's character go through. I'm just, I love Moon Knight. I'm biased. I don't know. I don't care. I like this show. And now my number two is Loki season one, which you might be like wondering, Zach, you gave that series a 10 out of 10. And then last night you gave Loki season two a nine out of 10. We will talk about that. But Loki season one was just near perfect. I, I mean, going back to rewatch it, the only episode I think is a little bit lackluster is the third one. But even then I liked the character development between Sylvie and Loki in that moment. And the way that it kind of leads into episode four and then five and six and that whole back half stuff, which was just so powerful. And the thing that I've always loved about Loki is that it never has to dive into the the big bombastic battles. Like some people might not love how big Moon Knight got by the end. I did because I liked how it actually touched into the Egyptian gods and all that stuff. But when I actually look at Loki, they could have easily had this grandos fight scene between him and he who remains at the very end, and they didn't. Uh, it was a conversation. And as someone who wasn't excited for Loki, like, at all, this series really showcases to me how incredible of not just an actor Tom Hiddleston is, I already knew he was, but it just is another added element to it. But I really think it's overall the added emphasis of how incredible the character is the development and the character cycle and very much loki season one showcases that right away where did this loki go after endgame segue to that okay now we're gonna give him the memories and showcase to him what was the past present and future and you get that all that emotional depth and it gets you caught up with this character so fast that now you're able to flesh him out in a whole new way and for me what season one did such a great job on was establishing the TVA, establishing the multiverse, establishing he who remains, and establishing Loki more as a character, and everyone involved around him, Mobius, Sylvie, B-15. Then you take those ideas into season two, which we'll talk about season two in a second. And I just found that season one is an excellent first chapter of everything. In the way that it really is getting Loki to his end game of all. So I was very pleasantly surprised by this all. And Loki season one is still phenomenal. At my number one, it's Loki season two. Loki season two is still the best thing the MCU has produced on Disney+. And I mean that as a whole just for the show. But season two, while I have small issues with episode two. And how kind of just how it starts off kind of just took me off guard. And I went into this season with like a different pre-notion of what this season was going to be about. And see, and the first two episodes didn't really establish what I wanted. Then three and four kind of brought it back around. But then by four, I kind of understood, okay, this isn't what I wanted. But it makes more sense now looking at the whole thing as a whole. And I, th I slept on season two and I slept on the finale and I rewatched part of it. And I came to the conclusion that Loki season two was almost perfect um but as a whole and on a thematical level even though i have issues with certain things in episode two on a thematical level loki season two 
is the best thing and one of the best things that the MCU has done. And the ending is for me one of the best endings that we've seen in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Uh, Loki is my second favorite thing they've ever done in the MCU now. Uh, Guardians 3, still my favorite, but Loki would be my second one right now. Maybe that'll change when I actually do my overall ranking towards the end of the year, but there's something about Loki Season 2 and the way that it ends with Loki smiling and viewing in on what his friends are doing, and I think there's a tie into that with, uh, I saw a comment, commenter, I'm not, I don't know the name off the top of my head, but he mentioned Molecular Man and his whole thing within Secret Wars, and I think that's something that they possibly could do now with Loki. But if that is the last time we ever see Tom Hiddleston in the role of Loki, what a perfect ending. What a perfect freaking ending. Because other than just looking in on his friends, he can also look in on his brother, Thor. He can look in on so many different elements if he wants to and be happy. He got his throne, a throne that he really didn't want in the end of the day that he came to, but it's a throne that the gods and time and just in general life wanted him to have. And he's no longer the god of mischief. In a way, he's the god of stories and the god of free will. And I think that's just like one of the most best and unique ways to end Loki's storyline in a very satisfying and deep manner. And on a thematical level, I think when you look at Loki as a whole, it was never about the journey. It was always about the characters itself. And while it did establish and grow a lot of different things within the multiverse and within different elements, this was one thing that I was very appreciative of and very happy with. So with that said, guys, that's my ranking of all the MCU seasons. Thank you so much again for watching this. Make sure to hit that like, subscribe button, comment down below your guys' thoughts. And of course, until next time, stay classy.